Howdy. This just popped in. Obviously, it's just 15 minutes old. Astronomy in space, astronomy. Cosmic super bubble magnetic field charted in 3D for the first time. Does this picture work? No, it doesn't. Astronomers have charted the magnetic field of the local bubble using data obtained by Planck and Gaia. Here the short pink and purple vector lines on the, sh on the surface of the bubble represent the orientation of the magnetic field discovered. The bubble sits within the Milky Way galaxy. Astronomers at the Center for Astrophysics Physics, Harvard and Smithsonian CFA have unveiled a first-of-its-kind map that could help answer decades-old questions about the origins of stars and the influence of magnetic fields in the cosmos. The map reveals the likely magnetic field. If there is a charge flowing through something it has a magnetic field around it if you have a magnetic field somewhere you can be sure that there is a charge flowing as well you cannot get one without the other the map reveals the likely magnetic field structure of the local bubble a giant 1000 light year wide hollow in space surrounding our sun Yes, I have been talking about this many times. Spheres within spheres within spheres. You are within your aura all your life. The aura diminishes in the moment of death, but that's a different story. We are protected by our magnetosphere from stuff from the outside. So has the sun. But anyway, like a hunk of Swiss cheese, our galaxy is full of these so-called super bubbles. The explosive supernova deaths. No, there are many recurrent novas and these kind of many super like nova events, and they don't always lead to the death of a star. But anyway, blows up these bubbles in the process, concentrate gas and dust to fuel for making new stars. Yeah, I haven't read this yet because it's still fresh. Just now, let's make a read through. I will shut up. The explosive supernova depths of massive stars blow up these bubbles and the process concentrate gas and dust, the fuel for making new stars, on the bubble's outer surface. These thick surfaces accordingly serve as rich sites for subsequent star and planet formation. Scientists' overall understanding of superbubbles, however, remains incomplete. With the new 3D magnetic field map, researchers now have a novel information that could better explain the evolution of superbubbles, super their effects on star formation and on galaxies writ large. Putting together this 3D map of the local bubble will help us examine superbubbles. In new ways, says Theo O'Neill, who led the map-making effort during a 10-week NSF-sponsored summer research experience at the CFA while still an undergraduate at the University of Virginia. UFA. <coughs> yeah, we try to watch this, but let's read first. Space is full. Space is full of these super bubbles that trigger the formation of new stars and planets and influence the overall shapes of galaxies. Continues Neil, who graduated from UVA in December 2022 with a degree in astronomy, physics and statistics. Congratulations! By learning more about the exact mechanics that drive the local bubble, in which the sun lives today. So they are assuming the sun as a living being. I don't know. In which the sun lives today, whatever that means. They are professionals, educated people. 
unlike me. We can learn more about the evolution and dynamics of superbubbles in general. Along with colleagues, O'Neill presented the findings at the American Astronomical Society's 2401st annual meeting on Wednesday, January 11th in Seattle, Washington. 3D interactive figures and preprint of the research are currently available on Authoria. The research was conducted at CFA under the mentorship of Harvard professor and CFA astronomer Alyssa Goodman, in collaboration with Catherine Zucker, a Harvard PhD astronomy alumna, Jesse Han, a Harvard PhD student, and Juan Soler, a magnetic field expert in Rome, hmm, Italy. From a basic physicist standpoint, we've long known that magnetic bubbles must play important roles in many astronomical phenomena. <laughs> yes, says Goodman, who wrote her PhD thesis on the importance of cosmic magnetic fields 30 years ago. By studying these magnetic fields has been notoriously difficult. Now I have to say one thing. Just by reading that, by studying these magnetic fields has been notoriously difficult. I haven't read until now anywhere, maybe it's still coming, about electricity. If you have a magnetic field, there is a current flowing. If you have a current flowing, there is an electric, electric field, a magnetic field around it. It's just like that. And because of the vorticity, or how to put it, if you have a magnet, if it's positively charged, it will spin counterclockwise, the vortex. If you have it negatively or south charged, it will spin clockwise. Yeah. I hope that they are correct now. I have to check it out. I think positive is counterclockwise. Yeah. Anyway, but they will always spin according to their polarity. It doesn't matter where you are, if you are on Mars, Earth, Sun. Even in Finland they do it the same way. But anyway. The difficulty perpetuality... The difficulty perpetuality drives me away from magnetic field work, but then new observation tools, computational methods and enthusiastic colleagues tempt me back in. Today's computer simulations and all sky surveys may just finally be good enough to start really incorporating magnetic fields into our broader picture of how the universe works. From the motions of tiny dust grains up to the dynamics of galaxy clusters. Yes, and atoms. Structured atom model and stuff. Magnetics. Electrics. The local bubble has emerged, has emerged as a hot topic in astrophysics by virtue of being the super bubble in which the Sun and our solar system now find themselves. Yeah. It's the aura of the things. As you have an aura, as everyone, everything alive has an aura. In 2020, the local bubbles 3D geometry was initially worked out by researchers based in Greece and France. Then, in 2021, Zucker Sugar, now of Space Telescope Science Institute Goodman, Juan Alves of the University of Vienna, and their team showed that the local bubble surface is the source of all nearby young stars. Those studies, along with the new 3D magnetic field map, have relied on data in part from Gaia and space-based observatory launched by the European Space Agency, ESA, while measuring the positions and motions of stars, 
Gaia was used to infer the location of cosmic dust as well, charting its local concentrations and showing the approximate boundaries of the local bubble. These data were combined by O'Neill and colleagues with data from Planck, another ESA-led space telescope. Planck, which carried out an all-sky survey from 2009 to 2013, was primarily designed to observe the Big Bang's relic light. <laughs> In the process, the spacecraft compiled measurements of microwave length light from all over the sky. Ah, this is when they found more light than this was supposed to be. No, anyway. The researchers used a portion of Planck observations to trace emissions from dust within the Milky Way relevant to helping map the local bubble's magnetic field. Specifically, the observations of interest consisted of polarized light, meaning light that vibrates in a preferred direction. This polarization is produced by magnetically, magnetically aligned dust particles in space. The alignment of the dust in turn speaks to the orientation of the magnetic field acting upon the dust particles. Mapping the magnetic field lines in this way was enabled way enabled researchers working on the Planck data to compile a 2D map of the magnetic field projected on the sky as seen from Earth. Yes, I have been saying this also many times. I don't like the term magnetic field because it is in a way never 2D. It is always a three-dimensional structure, a bubble, you know. In order to morph or de-project this map into three spatial dimensions, the researchers made two key assumptions. First, the most, that the most of the interstellar dust producing the polarization observed lies in the local bubble surface. And second, that theories predicting that the magnetic field would be swept up into the bubble surface as it expands are correct. Swept up. Yeah, let's go on. O'Neill subsequently carried out a compilated geometrical analysis needed to create a 3D magnetic field map during the summer CFA internship. Goodman likens the research team to pioneering map makers who created some of the first maps of Earth. We've made some big assumptions to create this first 3D map of a magnetic field. It's by no means a perfect picture, she says. As technology and our physical understanding improve, we will be able to improve the accuracy of our map and hopefully confirm what we are seeing. The 3D view of magnetic whorls that emerged represent the magnetic field structure of our neighborhood superbubble. If the field was indeed swept up into the bubble surface and if most of the polarization is produced there. The research team further compared the resulting map to features along the local bubble surface. Examples included the Pertau shell, a giant spherical region of star formation and the Orion molecular cloud complex, another prominent stellar nursery. Future studies will examine the associations between magnetic fields and these and other surface features. <laughs> With this map, we can really start to probe the influences of magnetic fields on star formation in superbubbles, says Goodman. And for that matter, get a better grasp of how these fields influence numerous other cosmic phenomena. Or your psyche. Or why birds are migrating. Or how the transmutation of elements is possible. But anyway. <laughs> Because magnetic fields only affect the movement and orientation of charged particles in astrophysical environments. First time electricity is mentioned, charged particles. Goodman says that there has been a tendency to set aside the field's influence when building simulations and theories where gravity, which acts on all matter, is the primary force at play. <laughs> Let's read that again. What? 
Goodman says that there has been a tendency to set aside the field's influence when building simulations and theories where gravity, which acts on all matter, is the primary force at play. Yeah. Further discouraging its inclusion, magnetism can be a friendly complex force to the model. This omission of magnetic field's influence, while understandable, often leaves out a key factor controlling motions of gas in the universe. These motions include gas flowing onto stars as they form and flowing away from stars and powerful jets emanating from them as they gather matter into a planet-forming disk. Even if the effect of magnetic fields in minuscule form is minuscule from moment to moment in the low-density environments where stars form. Given the millions of year timescales it takes to gather gas and turn it into stars, magnetic fields effect can plausibly add up to something substantial over time. Yes. But. The flowing gas is plasma. Goodman O'Neill and their colleagues look forward to finding out. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I have to write them. That's, you know, I'm just some random dude talking to chickens. But that's, that's something like reading. Even I learned about this. How just like, you know, not one single word about electricity. About the fact that you don't get a magnetic field without an electrical current and vice versa. Which is a universal law. I didn't figure that out. But I understand it. It makes sense. Our DNA is a, basically a vortex. It's spiral in nature. Whatever filaments erupt on the sun or lightning strikes and all kinds of stuff. You will find vortices, chirality and repetitive patterns which are visible all over the place, which are in nature totally electrical, dendritical patterns and whatever things. The clouds in our sky are plasma. All the weather events are electrical in nature. The winds are ionic, which they are spinning between the pillars of high and low pressure system, positive and negatively charged regions. Discharge events, rain, Snow, lightning, it's electrical, all, everything. Yeah, lightning strike is electrical. Think about that. Rain is also electrical. I've had great experience doing this research at CFA and assembling something new and exciting with this 3D magnetic map, says O'Neill. I hope this map is a starting point for our for expanding our understanding of the super bubble through super bubbles throughout our galaxy. Yeah, these the super bubbles in uh, the, of the galaxies. The, some of them might be remnants from recurrent novas, micro novas, or whatever nova there has been going on. And others might be just the auras of those planetary systems, which obviously, according to those people here, are seen as living beings. The sun is living here. Yeah, I live here too. You do too. No one ever left this place. We will be all together here until the very end. Either your personal or the end of our time at the beginning of the new. No one will leave. Yeah, probably you could get tossed out into the... into space by some very brutal weather, but I think it's quite unlikely that you could tell anyone about this happening. But anyway, I just wanted to share that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>